How's it going? These five ingredient easy griddle meals I like to make during the week because I don't have time. I call them one beer meals because uh, that's how many beers it takes me to drink while I make them. Cheers. Did you ever do Brenner growing up, breakfast for dinner? We did it all the time. My mom used to do it on Wednesdays. She'd do pancakes a lot. I'm not doing pancakes here, but that's what she liked to do. It was nice. It spiced up the middle of the week and uh, probably saved money, you know, to be honest, that's why she did to save money. Um, what I'm actually doing here, you'll figure out in a second when you see these ingredients, is breakfast burritos. And we're trying to save money too to pay off our uh, student loans. And that's why I got this sausage on sale for $264. What? My griddle is at 400 degrees. My wife gets embarrassed when I talk about the sales I find. Um, sorry. So pinch off this log of sausage right on your griddle. Add some green peppers, salt and pepper there. Now look, I'm just doing five ingredients, trying to keep it simple, trying to keep it weeknight, quick meal. You could obviously add onions or potatoes to this, but five ingredients is all we got here. And, you know, I'm hoping that this breakfast for dinner thing can become a tradition in our household as well. Something my son will remember. If you guys used to do it, let me know in the comments what you like to do or maybe you do it now. Let me know what kind of meals you make, what kind of memories you make with your family. I always love seeing that. Um, put the eggs right in the sausage because it's lowered the temperature since the meat's on there. So now it's closer to 325, which is where we want to do eggs at anyways. Salt and pepper going down. And then you just kind of let them set up give it about three minutes here do the old-fashioned TV roll boom there we go the eggs are set up moved them off to the left side of the griddle and cut that off down with the tortillas this is still on low just to kind of get the tortillas a little softened up a little bit of freedom cheese going down there and the trick with burritos is always remember put less filling in than you think it always takes less filling I'm gonna go ahead and fold these up this is hot, as you'll see here, because I can barely touch them. <laughs> We're going seam side down on the griddle so that the seam will kind of seal itself off. You can freeze whatever ones you don't eat, pop them in the microwave later that week for an easy breakfast. Both my wife and I work full time, so this is good for dinner and for lunches, honestly. This is a good meal to take into work for lunches. I'm just cutting this chicken up into strips and I, look, I know this looks like a PSA from the 80s for how to give people salmonella, but I promise you I washed that knife. <laughs> I didn't just start cutting these vegetables afterwards. The knife was washed. It's not like, hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more griddle videos and how to give your family a foodborne illness. Oh, comment, like, subscribe. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's not that. Everything's clean, I promise. Um, so there's... Uh, peppers on there onions chicken we're making like a fajita chicken is what's going on here we'll put these down spread the chicken out so everybody can get cooked up get nice color on it and like i said this is good for lunches or dinners i mean honestly what i did this time is i prepped all this in the morning and then just threw it on when we got home that's a pretty good rice the pre-made rice from uncle ben's honestly i like the lime and cilantro one better but I wanted to give this one a try. It was okay. I, I like the other one better. Hit it up with a little bit of water. My only regret when this whole meal is not using enough food. I would have doubled everything up. I think if you make this, double it up. Two pieces of chicken, maybe three. Two bags of rice. Another pepper, onion. You'll eat it during the week, I promise. My wife and I always eat this because we, we get home late, like seven. Like she gets off and I have to go pick up my son from my mother-in-law or from my mother. Make sure your chicken's above 165, it's at like 190. And like, this is so easy to either throw on the griddle if I prepped it in the morning or just pull out of the fridge. It's a fajita mix going down, throw some water on there. And you can think of, these are only five ingredients, but obviously you could you could add tons to this, you know what I mean? Pico de gallo, sour cream, salsa, cheese, avocado, cilantro. You could put it on nachos, you could do tortillas or hard tacos, so many things. Um, we like to just put it in this little Pyrex container and either take what we want to work or just grab it for a quick dinner when we both get home later before we got to give them a bath and put them to bed. Next, we got some Chinese food, kind of, not really. Uh, I mean, I'm the dude cooking on his griddle in Ohio, so let's be honest, this is just my version. I mean, honestly, I didn't even eat Chinese food until I was a sophomore in college. <laughs> like, we didn't go out to eat a ton growing up. Um... It's just not a thing we did and when we did do it we went to places that we knew and liked which was like pizza and burgers so i was like a sophomore by the time first time i had general so's and that was at like mark pies and 
That's even American Chinese. That's not even the real stuff. But anyways, I just steamed those broccoli and onions on this one. That's the pre-shaved ground shredded beef for like cheesesteaks. I get it from Kroger. You can use any beef you want, but that's just the already shaved stuff. Then here's the udon noodles, which I'm pretty sure udon translated means fat spaghetti. I could have just made that up, but here's where I made the mistake. I tried to steam them to loosen them up on the griddle, and I also used the pot lid. I don't know why I did that. That's like the trashiest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't know why I didn't use my dome. I think I thought, oh, you guys will be able to see what's going on better under the lid, which is a terrible idea. It just looks like I'm just grabbing random stuff out of my kitchen. Anyways, I was told by a lot of people after the fact that the best way to actually loosen these noodles up is to get boiling water or hot water and let them sit for five to 10 minutes in the water, like five to 10 minutes while your griddle is preheating. So that would make a lot more sense next time. Don't do what I did, learn from my happy accidents, as I'm continuing to try to steam and steam and steam this, and they're really not, oh, here comes the lid again. This is just, this is like trailer park cooking, honestly. This is very embarrassing. I should have reshot this, but I don't have time for that. I feel like I should be like, like I'm cooking this with like a Newport in my mouth and a baby on my hip. That's how like embarrassing this is. But anyways, they finally broke up. Here comes the fifth ingredient, which is the teriyaki sauce. So it's just beef, broccoli, teriyaki, onions, fat spaghetti. What else could you ask for? Whoa, look at that transition there. Hollywood, here I come. So a little more teriyaki. I would highly recommend trying this. It's super, super simple. Very good beef and broccoli. Next, we're doing some French toast. Heck yeah, man, I love this stuff. We're gonna put the whole carton, dozen eggs, going right into that shallow pan. I like that better than a bowl. It just seems easier when you get out to the griddle. About three cups of that cow juice going in there. You could also use heavy cream. I just don't have the money for heavy cream right now. One tablespoon of skinnamon going in there. Mix it all around. Then I also, one tablespoon of imitation vanilla um you know you could use the real stuff but again it's uh, getting a little out of my price range go ahead and mix everything up with the power of the internet double speed maybe triple speed now if you have a mixer a hand mixer you could try that but i don't want to make a mess uh, or a little blender uh, i just so i just use the fork and you still got some cinnamon on top here's the star of the show the cola bread the cola cola bill y'all this stuff is so dense. Look at this thing. If you've never used this, if you take anything away from this video, please buy this bread and try it for French toast. Please, I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. I saw this in a Epicurious video and it was, it, it was, it's changed my life, honestly. And I love Texas toast, but this bread was so, so good. Our griddle's at about 350. Go ahead and put down some oil. That's whirl, that buttery oil stuff, which, I'm sure it's terrible for you made in a lab somewhere butter would be good at this point too you could just use butter but i decided to go with whirl texas toast i'm putting in my egg mixture after i mix it up again because that cinnamon comes to the top and i do about 10 seconds per side just to get a little bit of the egg mixture on there uh nothing crazy and then watch this this is some next level dad skills right here i got one hand on the camera one on the french toast this is i, mean, I don't mean to brag but this is pretty impressive you know not a lot of people can do this camera and French toast at the same time. So anyways, enough of that. Get them on there and then boom, the whole loaf is on there. I'm not going to waste your time having me putting a whole loaf of bread on there. You saw the first two. You understand how it's done. So the, look at the look at those. Just look at the Texas toast. Look how great they turn out. And can you believe I'm going to tell you that the other bread is even better? Like, it, and you know how much I love Texas Toast. Like, I, I want to be sponsored by Texas Toast. I'm just throwing that out there again. If somebody could get the Texas people and the Toast people together, let them know I'm ready for the sponsorship. So, I put that on a warming rack to cool down. Actually, cooling rack, cool down in the kitchen. Here comes a cola. Now, I do two minutes on each side. That's what I did. This is my first time doing this. Two minutes on each side. It really soaked in a lot of that egg mixture. You can see kind of when I grab it, my finger indents into it because it got so like so much eggy mixture in there once you flip it take a look at this bad boy oh gosh it was so good the only thing i'll say about this is make sure you're kind of low temp 350 375 you don't want to burn it but you do have to leave it on there for a while because the middle turns into this like soft bread pudding ish mixture 
and you got to try to cook it as much through as you can on the middle but hit it up with some powdered sugar and you will not regret this my friends you will not make this french toast onion sausage red beans and rice and a creole seasoning and an av well, get that avocado out of here that, that was just laying around that's not part of this meal we our fifth ingredient is gonna be not the french toast we made earlier not these frozen ribs that I'm going to make at some point or the pork butt. Now I'm just bragging about all these sweet deals I got in my freezer from meat at Kroger. Look at that price though on that pork butt. Now anyways, the fifth ingredient is going to be shrimp. So a little thing about shrimp. Um, I read somewhere that you should always buy raw shrimp. Raw frozen shrimp, I'm sorry. If you live like in the Midwest landlocked like I do. Because I always thought, oh, let me buy the fresh shrimp. Fresh shrimp is better. And it's like, nah, the fresh shrimp is still frozen. And then it's sent to the grocery store, like in Ohio, then they defrost it. I got to peel off, get them so you can peel them off too. Um, I'm just, that's what I'm doing with these, just peeling the skin off. So they're the shell. But they do, said, like, do that because... It's getting frozen no matter what. It's got to freeze to get there. And then they're defrosting it and sit in their case for days. Well, if you defrost it, then you immediately cook it. So it's a good way to think about it. Then the sausage, I'm going to cut again into these little coins. Just try to get as much service area as possible on the griddle. We're going to go ahead back out to the griddle. We're at about 350. Put down a big old pad of butter here. Move that thing around. Make sure it's coating up the griddle nice. This time I did remember to get two bags of rice. So there's two bags of the Uncle Ben's be red beans and rice. And then there goes the sausage as well. And that red onion going down with it. And we're just kind of letting everything cook up. Let the rice kind of steam. Make sure it gets cooked. All it's already cooked. Make sure it gets warmed all the way up. Make sure the onions are spread out even. Get some nice color on these sausages here. Same thing we did with the sausages earlier. Get them spread out. As much surface area as possible means as much flavor as possible. Everything's on. The one on the right I cut off because the rice is pretty much good. And we're going to move the rice over there. Just like I did the other rice earlier. You know, get it broken up, get it loose and nice and warm and move it over there to the burner, which is off. And then keep cooking our sausage and our onions in this sausage was definitely better. I got the Zatarans. It's a little more than the regular kielbasa, but it had some good flavor to it. More butter going down because you can't have too much butter. Go ahead and swirl that around so it gets nice and frothy. Add the shrimp in there. And then this is just what is it, Tony's Creole seasoning. I don't know. It's like at my Kroger. I, I figured I wanted to use something people could get their hands on. Any Cajun seasoning will work. I just figured this is one you might be able to get at your grocery store. It's fine. It's not like going to knock you off your socks off, but I wanted to use something people could get. So the shrimp's cooking up, mix the onions with it. Here comes the sausage over with the rice because it's pretty much got enough color. And that's already cooked too, so that's just warming up to be honest with you. And then we're going to go ahead and once the shrimp are done, move them over to the side. And then we're going to bring everybody into the butter, the leftover butter, and start mixing it all together. All the rice the sausage, the red onion, the shrimp, the seasoning we put in there, just makes one big kind of like, uh, I mean, it's not jambalaya, I mean, nothing's authentic about this, but just, I don't know, some nice like uh, Cajun style, style dish here that I think you should definitely try, and I think you'll definitely enjoy. This is a classic griddle meal. We're at about 350 degrees, got our beef there, and what we're doing now is one of my favorite griddle meals. It's a first time, perfect for your first time griddle owner. This is egg roll in a bowl, also known as crack slaw, also known as cabbage and beef on a griddle. Now you don't have to do ground beef. You can do a lot of other stuff with this. You could do ground turkey, you could do ground pork, but it's usually coleslaw and a meat. And then also I grabbed this little ginger garlic stir fry kit from Kroger. My Kroger has been selling these stir fry kits and they're amazing. Now look, this is cheating a little bit because it's supposed to be five ingredients and obviously there's more ingredients. Look, it cooks in six minutes. That's how those kits work. But obviously 
there's more ingredients. I'm just counting opening a bag as one ingredient. You know, it's not like there's any prep work. That's the whole point of this video is easy weeknight meals. I'm opening two bags, uh, ground beef, and then some eggs are gonna come in. So it's super duper easy. And they're giving you the sauce. Ground beef is done. Brown it up, same as everything else. Move it to the side, turn off the burner. Here goes down the uh, vegetables from the stir fry kit. So nice, you got broccoli, you got sugar snap peas, some cabbage in there. It's just, it's a real nice assortment of vegetables that are in there, lots of good color. Almost makes me feel like I'm healthy, but I'm not. I'll probably still wait till next week to start my diet. A Little bit of seasoned salt going in there just for taste, you know. Move everything around, make room, because then we're gonna put the coleslaw mix down next. And that's what really is gonna help bulk this thing up is the two mixes oh did you see that little veggie jump sorry <laughs> just jumped out right off the griddle so there's a sorry before the coleslaw mix is going to be these eggs uh just two eggs i'm just going to put on there and then just kind of chop up scramble up put them in there there goes the coleslaw mix uh, don't worry we didn't forget about you buddy and it, there's actually like a lot of vegetables in this meal like i'm proud of myself like if you've never watched the channel before I usually don't have this many vegetables in a cook. I mean, mainly it's usually just like bacon and pancakes and more bacon. That's usually what my videos consist of. So anyways, flip your eggs over and we'll let them cook up then kind of chop them up and put them in there. Um, it's just, you know, it's super simple, super easy meal. It comes with a sauce in that kit. If it doesn't have, you know, if you can't find the kit and you don't live near Kroger or shop there, uh, you can still do the same thing you can just add some soy sauce and sesame oil or you could do the teriyaki again like we did in the earlier cook so it's really up to you just mix everything together get all the beef in there the veggies in there let them cook up on the griddle get some nice color nice flavor eggs are hidden in there somewhere here comes our little soy ginger sauce going on top of everything and then we're going to toss it together you know one more time at this point it's supposed to like sit in the sauce so i just cut off all the burners and then i go ahead and toss it all together one last time to kind of get the flavors melting together there and make it look nice and delicious and that, that's it man that's your like kind of egg roll in a bowl with this stir fry ginger kit from kroger i like to throw it in the container again here the 9 by 13 and uh, eat it for lunch during the week Oh, this one is so easy. You guys are really going to like this one. So, it's corn. Oh, I'm going to get a little aggressive with that corn there. Chop it in half with a knife. <laughs> and potatoes and a little bit of water. And I'm showing you this because I put them in the microwave to steam them. Gee, I mean, aggressive putting that lid on there too. I don't know what was going on when I did this cook. But I just need to calm down a little bit. So, I just steamed them for like two, three minutes before I put them on the griddle first. And then kielbasa. Some of them I left long. The other ones I coined up. Um, into those little, you know, rounds there. And then some green pepper, white onion that I did a heavy chop on. So I try to keep those the same size as the potatoes in the coined up sausage. Um, it, just for like consistency. So I get the same like bite. Then flip the corn. You can see we're getting good color on the corn. We're also getting some good color on the kielbasa. This is like a get to the next paycheck meal for me and my wife <laughs> is what I heard someone describe it as because this the kielbasa is so cheap and then uh, you know you just had like starch and starch with potatoes and corn and then the peppers so all, all i put on this was salt pepper and garlic powder too for seasoning just nothing crazy so you can see though it's it's a very cheap meal and, and that's why i like the coin ones better because they got a lot of color on all of those just a lot of color as we're mixing them with the veggies there um and you can see I'm moving everything to the right because it's starting to get done, but the potatoes still aren't quite done yet. So they went on first, but they were the last to get done, which is why cooking order is important. So remember your cooking order, folks. I can't beat that into the ground enough. It's in my free ebook, which is in the comments below. If you don't have my free ebook already, get it. It's free. It signs up for the newsletter. It's helpful. I hope it's, it's a lot of helpful stuff to help you learn how to griddle and make stuff like this. 